Hi everyone. Welcome to my living room. Typically I'm in the studio and which is also in our home here and I purposely chose to sit in my living room because I've been hearing feedback from everyone in the last few days. We've only been up and running for three days. I think today I just launched the fourth one that uh, that was available on YouTube and I'm getting these such wonderful personal messages about people saying thank you for coming into my living room and via the the ability of, of this platform, which I was really hesitant to do, as I mentioned in my very first video. A lot of fears, insecurities, and the idea that I had nothing new to offer that wasn't already out there. So with some pushing, a lot of pushing, a lot of persistence and perseverance from, from many of you, uh, I decided that I would step into what seemed like the abyss. And I'm really happy that I did. It has been a huge learning curve. I'm still learning. It's probably echoey here today because the ceilings are a little bit high. And usually I do vo voiceover on the video so you can hear it with, with more ease. However, today I just wanted to come to you just as I am in my living room. So I just finished my, my, my morning uh, coffee and I wanted to take, a to take some time here to offer a video regarding the fundamental of sitting. And before you click off going, oh, this isn't what I want, this isn't what I need, and I already know how to sit, please hear me out. The Yoga Sutras tell us right at the beginning of the text that yoga is meant to be steady and easeful. Stira and Sukha. And the intention, or in my eyes anyway, my understanding of, of practicing yoga is it's this beautiful benefit for not only the physical body, which is honestly why I first came into yoga, but for the mental body. And if our mental body is screaming at us when we come to a seat, it's saying, when am I gonna get out of here? All it's focusing on is the discomfort and the pain, and we can't actually turn towards looking and practicing meditation with the ease and effortlessness that we hope to offer ourselves. And so let's look at sitting. Let's look at this shape and some variations of it and see why or why not sitting is uncomfortable and why you may avoid coming down onto the ground. So if I could encourage everyone, if you're sitting in a chair right now and there's nothing medically telling you that you shouldn't get down on the ground, for some people you've had some knee surgery or some hip surgery and, and it might be that you're not supposed to be doing that right now so you always pay attention to your medical your medical professionals however if you simply don't come down to the ground because you don't like it and it's uncomfortable let's try and change that or let's try and find a little bit more ease in that not only on our yoga mat but out in our life i like to sit on the floor i don't know if i always have i've been practicing so long it's really hard to tell what i did or didn't do 25 years ago that I might not have been doing if I was practicing yoga. So it's a little bit tough for me to figure that out. But if you look inwards and say, ah, oh, whenever she comes to sitting or at the beginning or the end of the class, I really hope that that's a short period of time because this is uncomfortable for me. So if that's you, this would be a really great time for you to just open your mind a little bit to explore some options that might allow you when you're sitting on the ground, playing with your grandchildren, playing with your pets, playing with your children, cleaning the house, anything that gets you down on the ground. You have to get under a car to fix it because of mechanics. Like something, if you're like, oh, if, when, if easing down to the ground creates some mental blah, 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 please join me here. So what I'm gonna ask that you do is take a moment and go and grab your yoga blocks if you have them. So I've got mine here. So I've got two yoga blocks. You might want one or you might want two. If you don't have yoga blocks, get two firm books. We used to, back in the day, have phone books that were really thick. Those were great for sitting on. We no longer have those, at least not where I live. They're very small now. If you have a bench, a yoga bench, Go and grab that. If you don't have one, again, maybe something that's a little bit higher than a book and ideally maybe kind of slanted. 
go grab a blanket, please. Blanket, these are beautiful. They're, they're, they're cotton, they're firm, they're not gonna get squishy, and they don't have any bumps or nudges or bubbly things on the top. So if you have a blanket, I'm going to ask that you go grab that and fold it nicely. So allowing it to not be bunched up, taking time to not bunch up. I'm also sitting on my, my yoga cushion, my long bolster. I have a piece of foam. It's another option that you could try. Another yoga mat. If you have an extra yoga mat, you can use it rolled up like this as a prop. I know this seems like a lot of stuff. A few other things. So I have quite a variety of yoga props. This is a really nice one as well. So in terms of the way it's positioned for some hips. Smaller one yet. So if you have a variety of pillow sizes and shapes, I'm going to ask you to go grab those. I recognize that um, not everyone has these props, although I do know that many people that have been practicing with me have purchased them because they recognize how beneficial that they are. So it really is. I mean, we're investing in ourselves when we come to the mat. So if you know that a prop is going to be a benefit for you, I really encourage you to, to uh, purchase it and use it. So I think that's where we'll stop. Anything that you think within your home that you could use that would be comfortable, that the surface will be even on both sides, grab it. Perfect. Okay, so hoping that you've grabbed everything that you need. I'm going to start first by demonstrating and explaining why this matters. So I'm going to sit on the ground and I'm going to adopt uh, my body into certain shapes. So imagine you've just come to your yoga class and you're like, okay, yeah, I do this all the time. I kind of zone out when she gets here. I'm going to wait for her to move. Please tune in. Come down to this, come down to the floor. If you have a mirror, you might want to see that because sometimes we're visual learners. We don't actually understand what's going in our body. So if you need to go and sit in front of a mirror and try this, then do that. So you've been asked to come to your, your teacher is sitting down on the mat and they're saying, let's come to a comfortable sitting position. And you're like, comfortable? No. As comfortable as you can be, okay, at this point, this time in your life, in this time in your practice. So in kindergarten, we call this crisscross applesauce, one ankle under the other. So just take a moment and come into this shape. If your shape looks like this, so I'm going to show this from the side. If you find that your knees are way up here and your back is screaming, this tells me, this tells me what's going on here in your spine, that this isn't the most appropriate shape for you to take. So what can we do about this? Well, you could start by taking your blanket and sitting your sitting bones towards the front of the blanket. If I sit way back here, I'm not really solving anything. I just, I'm just, I'm still in this posterior tilt. So we don't want to have a posterior tilt. So when we have this posterior tilt, we're rounding in our low back and not great. Our hip flexors are getting really tight. They're holding us here. The lower back is strained. And this, this is not a comfortable nor easeful way to sit nor can it allow easeful or steady breathing. The chest is collapsed. So let's remedy it. What can I do? Besides just hurry that you teach what gets out of this. You can use blocks to help support so your hip flexors can be a little bit more relaxed. You come to the front of your, your blanket. So Take a moment, try that. Does it feel better? Does it change the position of your pelvis? Is your pelvis allowed to be a little bit more neutral and slightly anterior tilted? Because that's what we want. We do not want a posterior tilt. We do not want to be rolling back in the low back, which is how we spend most of our days, at a computer, driving, eating. So as you're in all of those shapes, let this yoga be yoga for life and make these constant um, adjustments so that you can create new alignment and create a new sense of ease. So as you bring the blocks under, perhaps this is appropriate for you, you can feel this, it's almost like the body takes a deep breath. The hip flexors don't have to work to support you. The spine is more 
I'm more content. The chest is open for breathing. I'm not jutting my chin forward and collapsing my ribs. I'm realigning, drawing the shoulders or the ears over the shoulders. So this is relatively easeful. This might be too much, maybe lowering them down, three different heights that we can take with our blocks. Okay? So option one, and maybe that's with or without a blanket. Some of you uh, will never let, the knees will never come down. And it doesn't matter how much you stress or sorry, how much you stretch or practice yin, it very well could be your anatomical design. Maybe it is your thigh bone, your femur, when it's coming into your pelvis, it's hitting bone on bone. It's not going to change. If you're here and it's not painful, and yet you're like, why doesn't it move? One, one of my daughters is like that, and she's like, she, it just doesn't move. My guess is, I haven't seen it, but if we were to look at an x-ray, maybe it is that her thigh bone is actually hitting her pelvis, and it's not going to move. We're not going to change that with any degree of stretching. So we need to be aware of that this may be this may be what your seat looks like. My long rectangular bolster. This is my favorite go-to. Again, let's look at this from the side. If you grab the bolster and you sit way back on it, I am creating this very unhealthy position for sitting. This strains my back. It feels blah, it doesn't feel free, and I don't feel happy, I don't feel um, joyful. And this is kind of the shape that our body takes when we're depressed, when we're not feeling well, when we're feeling sorry for ourselves. It doesn't feel good. We got this going on and the cervical spine starts to hurt. So we want to avoid this sense of feeling congested, feeling depressed, and feeling like you're just like kind of drawing down closer to the earth. So if you're sitting on your prop, take again a moment here. Come towards the sitting, the front of your bolster, okay? Or your block. You can try this on a block as well. Let your sitting bones, fancy word, they're actually called ischial tuberosities, let them come off the front of whatever it is you're sitting on so that you can come into more of a anterior tilt or neutral pelvis versus a posterior tilt. So again, looking at this, if I was to lean back, I come into this, there's this kinesthetic chain, but if I come to the front, without even having the force, my spine naturally wants to align into its natural curve. So we don't want to be tucking the tailbone. Tucking the tailbone causes this. Feeling the natural intelligence of your spine allows for this. Shoulders, ears, hips, in approximately one line. This feels easeful. Again, it can be done with a bolster. You can get bolsters that are shaped just for this purpose. The one that I mentioned <clears throat> that actually tilts higher at the sitting bones and allows the thigh bones to rotate outwards. So this is this too is not we don't want to be in this compression of the spine. We just want to allow the spine to have this beautiful chain like this golden thread or this, um, this, if you think of your spine like a strand of pearls and you know if you kind of have a strand of pearls and it's opened up and we put some of it in the bottom of your hand, they bunch up. You don't want your, your pearls, your vertebra to bunch up. You want them to create space throughout the length of the spine all the way up until you reach your skull. So when the teacher says, take time for your setup, take time for your setup, it matters. Because what you're creating here will go with you everywhere you go today. It will go with you when you're sitting at the table. It will go with you when you're sitting in the car. This, this sort of this memory to your body 
to maybe take some subtle shifts, some little micro adjustments. Maybe it's even slightly tilting the front of your hips forward to feel freedom and ease, not only in your spine, in your hips, but also in your breath. When our chest is open, we take in more oxygen. When we take in more oxygen, we carry more prana in our body, that life-giving energy. And that's what Patanjali was talking about with pranayama. It wasn't um, all these breathing exercises per se. Those, that, those are exercises for pranayama because the breath carries the prana, it carries the life energy in the body. There's other ways to absorb prana as well, but that's for another video. And so let's just take um, another exploration here. If you haven't tried some of your other things and you don't want to do it now, please do it later. This will not um, be wasted time. Noticing how a yoga mat also serves the purpose. Maybe crossing your legs the other way so that you give ample opportunity to both sides of your hips, okay? So keep, try a few things. There are some people that this isn't happening. You, maybe you've had hip surgery, you might have had a hip replacement, you might have, um, for whatever reason, not, this is not happening for you, this rotation. And so you can get benches made, you can purchase them. I actually had a friend in town here offer to make a bunch of benches, in which I'm very grateful. So if you're watching, thank you, Lucas. And he made them of all different heights. Very simple, three pieces of wood, an angle here so if you know somebody or if you're handy in the workshop you might want to do that so you'll take the prop and you once again you don't want to sit so far back that you're leaning off of it this isn't healthy this doesn't feel good I don't feel joyful my belly is bleh. my spine is overstretched and if you have um, compression in your in your lower back you definitely don't want to be coming into this shape so we're going to sit a little more forward. It's on an angle to intentionally tilt the pelvis into an anterior tilt. You could place a blanket underneath your ankles. You could place one between your thighs. You could even place one on your bench. I have another piece of foam here. After practicing for over 25 years, you get creative. Creativity is the mother of invention. So again, we're looking at this. We're looking at the pelvis. You take your hands onto the top of your pelvis, see if it's tilting back, or if it's tilting too far forward, you'll feel compression, and see if it just feels like just an ever so slight tilting down to allow this low back to be easeful. So I don't know, I think, hopefully you can see it well with the, the clothing on. So you might want to find the front of your hip sockets where the thigh bones enter into the pelvic area and finding those, placing your hands here. Notice what happens if you're slumping, the lowest part of the rib cage drops in. And if you allow for this natural intelligence of the spine, the spine isn't vertical and it wasn't meant to be vertical. It's the trajectory of vertical, but it's not locked, it's not solid. There are curvatures in it that we want to honor. This part of the chest that opens up this way and then down. So we take a look at a book and how the spine is designed for optimal movement. And that will help you recreate that optimal movement of the spine when you come to sitting. So that when we are in our seat and the teacher says it's time for meditation, your mind doesn't go eh, because of the physical part of it. It might be resistant because it's not used to practicing meditation, but at least we've reduced or taken out of it the component of the physical body. So a few more words regarding this. This alignment from your pelvis to your crown of your head is relative in any time that we're coming down to the mat in sitting with our glutes on the floor. So if you're coming into forward fold and you're rounding here, there could 
could be several things going on. What can you do to change this? You could take your blanket, sit towards the front edge of your blanket. This may be enough to help alleviate some of that and extend your legs from here. So again, playing with this position, anterior tilt, unless you've been told to come into a posterior tilt, anterior tilt, very slight. There's other adjustments we can make with our lower legs, but right now we're working on the pelvis. If you need to bend your knees, that's okay too. I recently took a refresher course with a very well-known um, yoga teacher, and she's a yoga therapist, and she made the suggestion of sitting on the corners of things to allow, kind of like this bolster, to allow the thigh bones to break off. And so if you come to the corner of your block, maybe try that. For me, it's uncomfortable. I don't, it, it, it hurts my, it hurts my tailbone. But you could explore that, maybe, with the corner of a cushion and see if that provides that freedom. Again, I really encourage this exploration to see which one creates that sense of freedom in your body. The fundamentals are important. I am going to continue to do the fundamentals so that when you're practicing, it's, it's impossible when the yoga teacher is in front of you to cue absolutely everything. Plus you wouldn't want to hear it. It would be literally you tune out. Sometimes I think I talk too much, but the feedback from people is that they really appreciate when I reference the anatomy piece of it, that they've had some major changes in their lives as a result. Uh, not only what's happening in how they feel and how they breathe, but how they walk, how they function throughout the day, putting on their socks, bending over. Those day-to-day -day functions become more easeful because you've paid attention to how your body is when you're on the mat. So thank you for tuning in. I hope that you found some little tidbit here that was helpful. And I, again, I can't stress how important it is to really explore to feel which one feels better for you. Thank you.